I have some more things I needed that I ordered, as well as a larger Black Friday purchase that can't really fit on here, so I'll have to do that one after. And it looks like we are correctly looking at what I expected. So looking at this one where it says R50, I think that is 0.5 millimeter diameter or something. These are pogo pins and sockets or spring-loaded test contacts. So with the caliper I'm seeing close to half a millimeter diameter on the smallest part here. It's very hard to show these and focus on them. On the bottom is the socket and on the top is the spring-loaded test probe. So the probe can go in the socket and then the socket can solder into a PCB. So I'll assemble that to make it easier. And now if I push down that's a spring-loaded test contact. So Here's just one example way to use it. Let's say this was a module with some sort of a processor that we needed to flash or test, and these surface mount pads were connected up to power and programming pins. We could have a bunch of these spring-loaded contacts so that we can lay this down on top of it, and when we apply pressure it makes contact, and then we can do whatever programming or testing we want, and then remove this, as a solderless interface. This is called Spectacle Lens, but I didn't really order anything except a magnifying glass to help see things like chips when I'm on the workbench. So I'm hoping it's that. And it is a lighted magnifier has an on-off switch. Kind of hard to press, it's slippery. No batteries installed. Two LEDs here, and that is three triple A's. So I found some mismatched ones, and definitely making it easier at least for me to read what's on this label. When I put it in view of the camera I can't see it. This is where I can see it. So yeah, I think that is accomplishing what I wanted. Normally I just have found this one over the past four years to be useful, but it's sometimes it's awkward. This one has a slightly larger viewing area and that's making all the difference just sitting here like this, but also the fact that there's no light on this one. I just find it not as easy. Sometimes I have to bring this right up to the camera and then I bring this up and then of course I can see. So I just thought I'm going to try this out. Even if it doesn't work proficiently with mail bags and stuff like that, I can tell it's going to make it easier for me on the workbench. And this is cables. So I'm not quite sure. It's USB something. I don't remember ordering anything like spare USB minis, micros. Oh, but that looks like USB-C, I think. I don't really have a USB-C device, but I kind of want to try doing PCB designs while switching over to USB-C. And so I remember ordering some of these cables now in preparation for that. It looks like this is maybe one meter long. So I'm probably not expecting this to be fully USB-C capable with high voltage current and such, but I just really care about a data connection plugging into a regular old USB port just to have this kind of connector on future designs. So this will suit my needs just fine. Now I just need some USB-C circuit board connectors that I can start working with, and maybe some modules with USB-C instead of USB micro. This says pin sealed relays, so I'm going to guess it's relays for sure, but I don't know pin sealed. Oh, I ripped this one to shreds. Um, yeah, those look like Songle relays. Uh, I think there's five in here. How do you open this? 
So there's what it says. I got to get used to doing this. I can't read that on the camera display, so I have to look at it myself. And of course, those are used on all of these style relay module breakout boards. And I have some other single and dual relay boards where I borrowed the relay for PCB designs here and there. I think I've used three of these so far, and I thought I should put new ones back on the boards that I took them from and have more to do further designs. So I thought I would get a few and see how they work out. This is electrical contacts. Sounds like a good start. That looks... Oh! Those are PCB uh, through-hole test points. It kind of looked like some sort of craft or hobby beads or something, and I don't think I ordered anything like that. Another good use for the magnifier is a background for focusing. So these have a loop on it, and then those two ends go down into a PCB. And it's good that they look like they are splayed out a bit. That'll help hold it inside the PCB footprint while soldering. So if I have a board where I put through hole test points like this one, now on the bottom that's retaining itself in here and I can solder that up. And now I can use that as a proper test point on the board. And it's a good place to put an oscilloscope probe or a ground clip or something like that. So that's a lot better than trying to jam the probe tip in the board and then it starts leaning and has strain on it and might break. So I thought it would be good to have these. And I wish there were more black and red for power ground and maybe less yellow. I'd like more of a color balance here because then I can separate out what individual signal colors are or analog versus digital or something. But it's a good start. And now the item from Black Friday that I could not fit on the bench. I've always wanted a 3D printer. I first used one 13 or 14 years ago, and back then they were over $800 for a flimsy one that will fall apart on you. So aside from the price, I also don't know anything about 3D design. And everything I've researched over the years says if you download a 3D model, you may still have to tweak something on it. And anytime I try to research what printer should somebody who doesn't know anything about this get, it just sounded unclear. Like, you're going to have problems no matter what, so you have to figure out which evil you're able to live with. And finally, it came down to Ender 3 V2 is at least widely supported out there. So when you do have problems, you can probably find a solution easily. And I finally saw a price that worked for me. In Canadian dollars, around Amazon, they are still almost $400. And in other online retailers, they go between $340 to $360 right now. But one of those stores had a Black Friday price for a brand new one, $259 plus a little shipping. It wasn't a big deal. And all the specs were the same as all the other current 3v2 models, whatever all those things are with the silent upgraded stepper controller and whatever else. So I finally bought one. And there's no way I would subject anyone to having to watch me put this together. So I just did it offline and then did a test print. The instructions really weren't helpful to me at least. I still kept assembling things backwards or upside down or on the wrong side of a thing. So I had to keep looking for YouTube videos showing how to do it. But eventually I got it put together and I see that it came with G-code for printing out a cat. And I figured, you know what, I keep seeing this boat. And as it turns out, it's called Benchy. So I went and found the 3D model. Then I had to install the slicer. And I don't know what I'm doing. I just opened the 3D file and said, make me some G-code. I didn't change any settings. I didn't know what I was doing or what to expect. I think I leveled the bed correctly. So then about an hour and 45 minutes later, I got a boat. So here's how it looks, and I can't focus if this is showing up. Generally, the biggest thing I saw was the top of these arches was missing a little bit here, which apparently for this kind of printer is perfectly acceptable. And so it's the same on the other side and the same thing maybe at the top of this port window. 
but generally everything looked okay to me. There was a little stringing, or at least if that's the right word, there were a couple of strands of filament that I picked off, but it wasn't that bad. Now there's supposed to be text on the bottom, and with this white it's not really showing. Maybe I have to do this old school. So whatever this is supposed to say, I've got something here. I'm considering this a success for a very first attempt at printing without really setting anything up and knowing what I'm doing. So now I can start maybe learning how to at least modify 3D models and build some custom enclosures for anything I'm doing, especially something that may use a little LCD or OLED display if I want to mount this better. I can finally get started on stuff like that. If only I can find table space. The printer landed back on the floor now. So now with this 3D printer and this lighted magnifier as new tools and these spring test points, maybe allowing more elaborate fancy test fixture setups going on in the future and trying to get switched over to USB-C. I'm joining this century finally with a bunch of stuff, making things easier to test and just some parts as usual. And purchases like the 3D printer especially are made a lot easier with the help of channel and Patreon supporters. So thanks for helping out with that. And I did make some other Black Friday purchases. Those will be likely showing up in other mailbags. Until then, I guess I have some learning to do.